welcome to you. We're so glad that you have chosen to spend your morning with us today. Whether you are watching live or you're catching up, our prayer is that you experience God's power and his presence with you this morning. We are North Berwick Christian Fellowship and you can find out more about us on our website. As a community, we're learning what it means to have faith and to follow Jesus. And we want to make a difference into our, the world around us and the communities that we live in. Whether you live locally or further afield, we would just love to welcome you. And we are so thankful that you have connected in with us this morning. My name is Jo and I'm going to be leading us through the service this morning. If you have any questions or comments or just want to connect in, then please do leave a comment in the comments box and, uh, and chat with us and we would love to connect with you. You're also very welcome to email us if you'd like to do that. So there's a few different ways that you can connect with us on a Sunday. You can join us on YouTube every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe so that you are aware of future content coming out. And if you'd like to meet more of the people in our community, then you can do that at 10.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning where we meet together on Zoom for a bit of time of connection and ministry together before we watch the service together. You can also sign up for our weekly email. This is our NBCF Connect email, which we send out every Saturday morning. And this is just full of information about the ongoings and the life of the church. You can also connect into a small group. These are online at the moment and they meet for around an hour every week. And this is the purpose of these is to get to know one another and to connect and to grow in our faith with God and in our relationships with one another. All right, so we have a few notices this morning before we go into our time of worship. We have been planning for a while for our first in-person meeting and we're delighted to let you know that we're going to have our first in-person meeting as a church on Sunday the 30th of May. St Andrew Blackadder Church of Scotland have very kindly let us use their facilities and so it's going to be at 1.30 p.m. Now this is just the headline we are going to give you some information this week on email because we are aware that there will be lots of questions around this and so we will be sending you an email during the week which will have lots of your questions answered. And of course, if you feel like we haven't answered your question, then please do get in touch with us directly. We do want to say that there is absolutely no pressure for you, for you to attend. If you feel like you're still um, needing to, to um, stay home uh, for vaccination purposes or for other purposes, there are, there's no pressure for you at all to attend and there will be an alternative online option available for you so you will not be missing out. So do get that date in the diary that's going to be Sunday afternoon the 30th of May at 1.30 and we will be, be providing much more detailed information this coming week on your emails. Live worship, we've been doing this for a few um, months now, our next live worship slot is going to be the 23rd of May at 8 p.m. and that is on Zoom or on YouTube. You can connect either way. And finally, we've been really enjoying our tea and cake sessions and they are um, usually at 11 a.m. on the normal church Zoom link and the next one is going to be on Thursday the 20th. So Thursday the 20th, 11 a.m. for our tea and cake and this is just a time to socialise, no agenda, bring your own tea and cake and I just spend some time chatting together and being community together. All right, this morning we're going to have a time of worship before Neil then continues our new series looking at understanding the times. If anything, if you're anything like me, just love the session last week, just really begin to think what does it look like to understand the times that we live in. Okay, let's head into a time of worship now. This is one of the things that we just love to do as a community, to dedicate time of singing to God, of worshipping him, glorifying him, giving him all the honour that is due his name. And we just love him and we want to express that to him in our singing and in our worship. And when we do that together, we step into an awareness of his presence with us and that he comes and he meets us in this place and he pours in his strength and his love and his grace to us wherever we are at. I don't want to say this to you, wherever you are at this morning, wherever you feel like you're at personally, relationally, emotionally, physically, wherever you're at, God meets us where we are at. 
He meets us where we are at and he wants to pour in love and grace and strength to you this morning. So Father, we come to worship you this morning. We still our hearts in your presence. We lift our eyes to you away from the anxious thoughts. We lift our eyes to you. We give you thanks for your faithfulness to us, for your great love for us. Psalm 57, the Passion Translation, verse 7 to 11, says, My heart, O God, is quiet and confident. Now I can sing with passion your wonderful praises. Awake, O my soul, with the music of his splendor song. Arise, my soul, and sing his praises. My worship will awaken the dawn, greeting the daybreak with my songs of praise. Wherever I go, I will thank you, my God. Among all the nations, they will hear my praise songs to you. Your love so extravagant, it reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness so astonishing, it stretches to the sky. Lord God, be exalted as you soar throughout the heavens. May your shining glory be shown in the skies. Let it be seen high above all the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship.
You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. Of course, the words of the late John Lennon from his famous song, Imagine. I spared you the singing, but I'm sure you have the song in your head already. In this song, he expresses a desire for oneness, a desire for connection. He dreams of a time where everyone is connected. A quote now from Mark Zuckerberg, the creator and CEO of Facebook. We just cared more about connecting the world than anyone else, and we still do today. Again, that heart for connection, the apparent birthplace of Facebook. Research has apparently shown that there are only ever six degrees of separation between any two individuals on the earth. And if you jump from friends to friends of friends and onwards, it would only take a maximum of six steps to reach anyone else in the world. And a 2016 study on Facebook showed the number may be closer to an average of four and a half for those, of those that were on the social network at the time. Our world is longing for connection. We're continuing our series today on understanding the times. The heart behind this is to help us understand some of what's happening in our culture in this season. And in response, we need to ask ourselves some really important questions. The first is this, what kind of church do we need to be in this next season? And more importantly for each of us, what kind of disciple do I need to be in this next season? Last week, I unpacked two words that I believe describe aspects of what's happening in our world at the moment. Disruption and change. We live in a a massive time of disruption, politically, socially, and technologically. Things are also changing faster than ever. What was big news last week is old hat this week. So today I wanna explore one word, disconnected. And it might seem like a really odd choice of word in our day and age. Instantly, our minds go to just how connected our world is. So we've never been more connected. We all live much of our lives connected to devices through the wonders of the internet. Thanks to technology, we have the ability to call, to text, to iMessage, FaceTime, WhatsApp, email, Skype, Zoom, Snapchat, and DM anyone in the world. And all of this ability literally at our fingertips. And it's never been more easy to connect with others. We also have connected homes now. I have to confess to being somewhat a lover of uh, new technology and I I like to try things out. So, you know, when we come to our home, whenever that's allowed, in our living room, I no longer have to control the lights in our living room by using a switch, I can simply say, lights off and the lights will turn off. In our old house, we had a system connected to our heating, which enabled us to control our heating remotely. So when we went on holiday, remember those things called holidays? Well, when we went on holiday, we would wait until about an hour or so before we got near to our home and we could turn the heating on so it was nice and warm for us coming in the door. You can now have entire morning routines set up so that when you say to your smart speaker, good morning, it it can turn the lights on for you slowly. The coffee pot can start to brew, the heating can come on and the smart speaker can read you a daily digest of relevant world news for you before reading you a schedule of all the things in your calendar. Even our homes are connected. All of these technologies claim to bring us closer together. Like the old BT slogan, it's good to talk. These companies may have just a little bit of a vested interest in that promise. So we live in a hyper-connected world, and yet the research tells us a very different story. Loneliness has been described as an epidemic here in the UK. People are lonelier than ever. The UK government launched a cross-government strategy in 2018 and the UK even has a loneliness minister 
dedicated to looking at this issue. And at the time, it was described as one of the greatest threats to public health. And all of this was before a global pandemic, where people have been forced into isolation and all the usual support systems have been withdrawn. A 2010 study showed that loneliness was worse for people's health than obesity. The health implications are far and wide. Another 2010 study in Scotland showed that 11% often felt lonely and 34% sometimes felt lonely. In 2017, it was reported that more than a third of the population in Scotland live alone. These numbers, those facing loneliness, are likely to have increased this past year. So in a world that has never been so connected, people have never felt so disconnected. Disconnection is the word in our times. And yet people's desire to be connected remains strong. We only have to look at the massive growth of social media in the past 10 years to see that. The promise of connection is hugely attractive. People long to be connected. And social media for many seems to provide that opportunity. And there have been lots of positive things that we can celebrate. It's never been easier to keep in the loop with family and friends that live at distance. We can see their photos, their life updates as we scroll through, and we can maintain some connection through that. And we can share in the significant moments of others. We can wish them a happy birthday and congratulate them on anniversaries and weddings and babies. It's also created a space for people who have shared interests to come together and learn and grow across all the geographical boundaries. So for many, there's been a hugely positive side to social media. Yet most of us are also aware that there is a dark side to social media. The 2020 docu-film, The Social Dilemma, caused a splash when it was released last year. This dramatized documentary sought to highlight the ways in which social media companies use our data and our information in ways that we may not be aware. These platforms are all free and anyone can use them. And, and because they're free, it's true that we and our data are actually the product. They are ultimately businesses who seek to make a profit based on learning about our habits, our likes, and our connections. And we're all freely signing up to be marketed to. And whilst parts of this documentary are clearly exaggerated dramatizations designed to cause some alarm, there are truths that underline the concerns. Many of these social platforms are designed to addict us. Notifications on our phone constantly pull us back into the social world and the chemicals that get released every time we get a like or a comment, they, they create a pleasure, pleasure sensation within us that draws us back in for more. So social media has also been linked to all sorts of negative behavior, um, bullying, political manipulation, self-harm issues. The mental health issues for people, particularly young people, but not just young people, have been vast. And I would personally hold to the view that none of these technologies uh, and new ways of connecting are inherently evil. Rather, like all technology, they make good servants but poor masters. We must make sure that we're not being discipled by our phones more than we're being discipled by Jesus. And that takes wisdom and discipline. Social media reveals our heart to connect. Johan Harry, a journalist in 2015, released his now famous TED Talk. It has over 17 million views. The talk is titled, Everything You Think You Know About Addiction Is Wrong. In it, he makes the point that research has shown that the opposite of addiction is not sobriety, but rather connection. This talk has challenged the way people globally think about addiction in its many forms. A number of studies have shown that addiction is an adaptation to our environment. Addictions tend to form when people fail to find connection with other real people, either through isolation or past traumas that make connection hard. Whatever the cause, 
The opposite of addiction is connection. So addiction reveals our heart to connect. Culture has changed rapidly in recent years. The ability for us all to travel, the opportunities to work wherever, and the technology and prosperity that has made that possible is something that's only really happened in recent generations. And the result is that people don't tend to live in one community all their lives. They don't necessarily live next to family and they therefore don't, seem, don't seem to have the same social support structures they used to. And these long-term relationships are often the place where meaningful connection is found. It's just that now we have the option of up and leaving. Families are sadly breaking and people don't always have role models to look up to. I recently came across this brilliant idea. Uh, Rob Kenny is a dad and he realized that there was a real need for father figures in our society. So he began a YouTube channel titled, Dad, How Do I? And he's like a, a becoming like a virtual dad for people. He has all these videos that are about how to do things like change car tires and put up shelves. But he also has these little pep talks about important values that he wants to instill in the next generation. I just love this idea how he uh, saw a gap and began to reach out, create connection and help people. It's, it's a powerful thing to do. So our world is longing for connection, yet many are struggling at this time, feeling disconnected. All of this sounds very depressing, so I'm sorry. But what does this mean for us today? How should it shape and challenge the way we do church and the way we live as followers of Jesus? I want to make two points. The first is this. We must pursue real connection. As believers, the message we carry into a disconnected world is one of connection. Genuine connection, life-giving connection. The kind of connection that we're all longing for. Connection to God and connection to other people. As we read in Ephesians 2 recently, God has brought peace firstly between us and him, but he's also brought peace between all the different people groups on the earth. And real connection flows in a specific direction. Our ability to connect with others is supported by our ability to connect to God. So people all around us are expressing a, a longing to connect with purpose. And we believe that purpose is only most fully expressed in relating to the God who made us. So the invitation begins with connecting with God, the God who made us, the God who knows us intimately, the God who actually designed us to connect in these ways. We're actually hardwired for connection. And when we connect to God, we discover his love. And it is his love that we are made for. It is the love that challenges us and inspires us and ultimately changes us. We find peace in our connection with God and we can finally let go of striving. So our pursuit of real connection has to begin with our intimate connection with God, the personal part of our faith, being welcomed home by our loving Father. In our modern world, we face many challenges to that connection. You see, once we have that initial connection to God, when we first turn to him, that is, that is not enough. The invitation is to an ongoing, life-giving connection. Jesus puts it like this, John 15 verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So the real connection is this remaining in God, abiding in that connection with God. But how do we do that? Well, for me, this is about focus and awareness. I heard someone say recently that in our, our day and age of distraction, that focus is a superpower. And I tend to agree the ability to do something and focus on it, 
without checking phones, emails, notifications, etc. I recently turned on the feature on Facebook that showed me weekly how much on average I've been spending on Facebook. And I was shocked. I'm not on it all the time. And yet, how much of that time has been wasted over a week? And apparently most people check their phones 58 times a day. And many, it's much higher than that. So one practical thing I'm trying to do is, uh, on my day off, which is a Saturday, uh, trying to have a mostly phone-free day. And it might be different for you, but this idea of abiding in our connection with God, for me, it's about two things. Firstly, removing distractions. And secondly, forming habits. Forming habits to remind me of my connection with God regularly and fighting the distractions, the things that would seek to steal my awareness of God. And sometimes to stay connected with God, we have to disconnect from other things. What if I checked in with God 58 times a day rather than checking my phone? And to be honest, I'd be happy with half that number sometimes. And when I worked in an office, I used to use the, you know, the job of going to make cups of coffee for people as an opportunity just to recenter myself in God and become aware of his presence. And we all know good coffee is next to godliness, right? But his connection with God is something that's built in to your calendar. And this in itself could be a whole talk, but we need to move on. So we pursue that real living connection with God first. However, we're also hardwired for connection with other people. Real, 3D, in-person people. Church is a family, a community, a place of sharing life. A place where we can together experience that real connection to God, but also that genuine connection to one another. The love of God that we experience, it reveals to us the way that we are to treat other people. Colossians 3, reading from verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. We are all dearly loved, as these verses say, and it flows out to others. And this love for one another, it is a distinctive of the church, or at least it should be. John 13 verse 35, Jesus said this, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And it sounds idyllic, doesn't it? A a community of perfect love where we all express it to one another daily. Yet we know in reality it takes work. Real connection is hard work and that's why many people prefer some sort of pseudo connection. Sometimes that's why people prefer uh, the kind of connection the digital world can offer because it's much harder in real life to claim that the internet died when you're mid difficult conversation and it's much harder to pretend that you didn't receive that message. But who will come to you in a time of crisis? It won't be your Twitter followers or the casual acquaintances on Facebook. It will be those who you've built deep relationship with. Real connection, healthy family requires lots of us. It requires us to be open, honest, and at times vulnerable. And it means we need to operate in forgiveness. It means we need to challenge one another at times. It means we hurt when others hurt. It means we need to be willing to own our own mistakes and our past hurts. But if we're willing to put this hard work in, on the other side is the kind of connection that we're all longing for. To be understood and heard, to be loved unconditionally, to be championed, to have people celebrate our successes and help us discover our purpose and our gifting. 
This is the connection that everyone desires. The church is meant to be a community that models a different way of living, a way centered on Jesus and saturated in his love. Now we run a, a school of ministry, which for many people has helped them experience what a life-giving community can be like and what it feels like. I remember the story of one lady and she was in her mid fifties. And as the school progressed, she got up to share one day that in stepping into our school community, she had experienced value and honor for the first time in her life. That means that she'd walked around for 50 plus years and not experienced that. She was a Christian. She'd been to church for years. We were humbled, but also shocked. There are many, many people walking around with that experience, having never experienced what real love and value is like. And that is what church should be in the world, a connected community. Which brings me to my second point. We need to pursue real connection, but we then need to offer real connection. In a world longing for connection, but experiencing disconnection, we need to offer genuine connection. We get to point out how genuine connection first is with God and then to others, and that will truly satisfy. That loneliness you feel, that insecurity that binds you, it is met in the person of Jesus and in the people of Jesus. As a community, we want to invite others in to experience what we are pursuing ourselves, connections that matter. And it happens in all our weekly interactions. It's in the way we invite those who are on the outsides in. It's the way that we're friends to those around us, the way we mourn with those who mourn and we rejoice with those who rejoice. It's the life on life care we show others. And we can be a people who reach out our hand and offer real connection. The way we navigate technology, the use of social media and other forms of communication will definitely be part of this in the culture we live in. We want to be a voice of health in, in a system that can at times bring out people's worst. And we want to be kind in a world that can be cutting and mean. We want to be wise where others will be quick to vent or complain. We want to see the best in others, not look for their faults. We want to demonstrate a different way to connect with one another. We want to listen when others only want to shout. We want to invite others in. And this happens through the way we smile, the way we care for our neighbors, the way we speak life and hope to others, the way we're open, honest, and real. So who in your life today can you reach out to and show that real connection to? So in our times of disconnection, let's help others connect. Let's pursue that real connection ourselves. Let's develop our connection with God and our connection with one another. Then let's offer the world that real connection. We're not a perfect people by any means. We don't get it all right, but let's open our hearts to those around us and connect people to the source, the source of love, Jesus. Don't stay disconnected today. Come connect with a God who loves you unconditionally and a people who are learning to do the same. We're not satisfied in having hundreds of friends on social media. We're not satisfied with more possessions. We are only satisfied when we discover the, the connections that we are made for. So this week, what one thing could you do to invest in your connection with God? Maybe it's taking just 10 minutes today just to pray and be alone with God and talk to him. Maybe it's about putting a worship song on and just lying on the floor and just listening to the words wash over you. Maybe it's about reading God's words to you through the Bible today. But what one thing could you do to invest in your connection with God? And secondly, what one practical thing could you do to grow your connection with one other person? Is there someone you can text and just say how much they mean to you? Maybe you want to meet someone 
you don't know that well for a coffee. Maybe you know your neighbour has a need that you can meet. Maybe you just want to encourage someone this week. But what one practical thing could you do to grow your connection with one other person this week? So the call is for us to live as a connected people. Let me pray for us as we finish today. Lord, I thank you that we can have a living connection with you. That we can step into that relationship we were designed for, to know you and be loved by you. Help us to grow in that connection this week, God. We don't want to take it for granted that as life goes on, we want to stay connected with you. Help us to recognize the distractions that get in the way and help us to form habits that help us to stay connected with you. And God, as we think about how we express that connection to others, I pray that this church would be a place of love and support and encouragement, a place which is full of hope, a place that speaks life to our community, a place which models relationships that are healthy and vibrant. And God, I pray that you would empower us by your spirit to live that out. Give us grace for one another. Give us your love for one another. And in a world that's disconnected, help us to offer real connection. Amen. Thanks, Neil, for another amazing message on understanding the times. Just lots of us to think about and look forward to discussing in our small groups this week. And thank you for joining us this week. It's just so great to have you with us. If you would like to message us and let us know that you've been watching and engaging with our services, we would love to hear from you wherever you're at in the country or, or indeed in the world. We'd love to hear from you. And if you don't want to miss out on future content, please do hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you can get notifications of future content which we are putting out. Just pray that you have an abundantly blessed week where you know his peace and his presence and his kindness to you in everything that you do, no matter how you are feeling, his kindness is there for you. Have a great week and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Bye.